This is the Canon RP versus the Olympus EM1 Mark II for portrait photography. Disclaimer, this is not an exhaustive review by any means. This is just my experience in a scenario that I encounter quite often with these cameras. Everyone has their preferences and I certainly love the Micro Four Thirds system. Let's see how it matches up against full frame. I had a portrait session scheduled at a park recently and it's beautiful. There's all kinds of fall foliage right now. And so my wife wanted to go along and do our own photos at the same time. I thought that was a great idea. And I'll be using our photos for an example in this video. To be completely clear, I don't see this as an either or type of situation. I actually use both cameras each time I go out and do a portrait shoot. I have the Olympus on my left hip and the Canon on my right hip. I use a dual shoulder harness. It's kind of like a backpack straps. It's really comfortable and allows me to, to quickly access both cameras. I really like the utility of the harness. It's been super helpful and it really didn't cost very much. I think I paid maybe $20 for it. For all the Canon pictures, I was using my Canon EOS RP with the Canon EF 85mm f1.8 lens. I'll often use the Nifty 50, the 50mm f1.8, uh, but I didn't use that in, in these particular photos. I did later on when I was on my paid shoot. There's something magical about the Canon 85mm lens. It has a really nice pop to it. Of course, it's got that beautiful bokeh that everybody loves. Many clients are going to be looking for the specific look that this lens provides. Unfortunately, it's not a look you're going to find with the Micro Four Thirds system. At least not cheap. <laughs> I'd say I paid maybe 400 for my 85mm lens and it's more than paid for itself. For aspiring portrait photographers, I would certainly recommend the Canon 50mm f1.8 lens. It's available with the EF and the RF mount. I use the EF mount, but if I was to buy one today, I would probably get the RF because I have the Canon RP, which uses the R mount, rather than using an RF to EF adapter. I generally use my Olympus EM1 Mark II for the wider shots. For this shoot, I was using the Olympus 12 to 40 millimeter f2.8 Pro. I'm usually shooting outdoors with a greater depth of field, so f2.8 is perfect for that. Actually, most of my shots are probably around f4, f5. This lens has character and a nice pop to it. It doesn't quite have the magic that the Canon 85mm does, but it's pretty amazing. The additional versatility of the zoom makes this my go-to micro four-thirds portrait lens. The 12-40 is a great all-around lens and it stays on my camera most of the time. I wouldn't call this apples to oranges, both are professional cameras, fully capable of the job at hand. For me, the RP is more of a one-trick pony. It's an amazing portrait camera. That's not to say you can't shoot other types of photography with it, but don't expect it to be great for sports and wildlife. The lack of in-body stabilization, or IBIS, doesn't make it a great choice for video either. The Olympus EM1 Mark II is certainly the more versatile camera, when in the woods, I can throw on my 75 to 300 and get extensive reach in a compact size. It's fully capable of portraits, but might not blur the background quite as much as some clients prefer. Without a doubt, this is my favorite of the two, but I understand that some paying clients want that Canon look. The approach to editing is a little bit different as well. The Canon photos barely need touched. Just minor adjustments to the shadows, highlights, exposure, that's it. Those nice blurry backgrounds make editing a breeze. The Olympus is great and it has nice colors, but I find myself masking the backgrounds quite a bit. This is so I can lower the exposure and make the subject pop out just a little bit more. This is because I'm shooting wider with a greater depth of field, I often need to expose correctly for the subject and then lower the exposure on the background later in post. Again, this is not an apples to oranges comparison, but I don't think I would call it apples to apples either. Actually, it's a Canon to Olympus comparison. 
If I had to pick one of these for portraits, and specifically just portraits, it would be the Canon RP. I love to take all kinds of pictures, including wide angle environmental portraits. At the end of the day, I am trying to make some money with my camera, and the Canon just happens to provide that nice pop, the blurred backgrounds, and fantastic colors. This is the look that many paid clients are searching for. To further that point, you can certainly stop down the aperture on a Canon camera and get more depth of field. Whereas it's a little bit more of a struggle or a budget concern to get that type of look on an Olympus or Panasonic Micro Four Thirds camera. So this isn't an exhaustive review. It's just my personal opinion from practical experience. I love the Micro Four Thirds system, but for portrait photography, I keep going back to full frame. I use both, and depending on what the client wants, I might use the Olympus more than the Canon, but generally for smaller groups, headshots, couples, I'm using the Canon. Check the description for links if you're interested in any of the gear used for this shoot. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Till the next time.